This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... Does the sun have a companion? Binary, trinary, quadrinary, infinity, or what is the relationship between our sun and the stars in its star field? Scientists have determined that the sun has a sibling. Join us on this episode of Sweet Star Genitalia. Okay, yeah. Science announced. Hey, guess what? The sun has a sibling. Is it a boy? Is it a girl? Is it a sister? Is it a brother? Wait, so if you're a hermaphrodite, are you a brother or are you a sister? Or are you a brister? Or are you a cyst bro? Cyst bro? That doesn't sound good. Okay, wait. It's Saturday, so I definitely am going to stick to the hard-hitting facts. And I'm tr not going to try to make too many jokes about the son's sister. Is she hot? Oh my god, that joke is so awesome. It's filled with wind. Ladies and gentlemen, this story is huge. It is so huge and monumental that Neil Tyson DeGrasse, Mike Brown, Amy Mainzer, Phil Plate, and the entire IAU committee are meeting now to discuss stellar genitalia. Yeah, that's correct. In this dispute between whether or not it's the son's brother or sister, the IAU is now going to officially define the genitals of the stars you know like kind of what is the stellar penis and what is the stellar vagina and that is exciting to me is it exciting to you yep scientists found it and as par to the trend of the course of the day it is an extremely fascinating story but it is so far away that it really doesn't matter don't you love that crap i do too all right we'll start over at the atlantic with me god gar burr our son has a sister. Apparently, it comforts her to think that the son's sibling has a stellar vagina. That's okay. Stellar vaginas bring me comfort, too. It kind of looks like the son is a dude, man. Well, I guess that's our son. He's got two eyes, and he's got some samurai ponytail in the back. The ancient Egyptians called it Rar. The ancient Greeks called it Helios. The ancient Mayans called it Kinichiwa. Kinichiwa? Wait, that's Chinese for I love you. Konnichiwa. No, it's Chinese for I love you is what I need. And konnichiwa is Japanese for hello. Man. The ancient Germans called it Sol. Yeah, well, I guess they all got it wrong. Because they're all ancient now. And we are modern, which makes us infinitely more winnable. Winner? Okay. Our longest standing and most deeply held myths have so often revolved around the sun, in large part because we humans have revolved around the sun. That distant sphere of glowing gas has been to us fragile creatures, warmth and light itself. Some of us pseudo-scientists would say, yes, warmth, light, air, water, atmosphere, environment, climate, weather. But science is like, no, 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 no. The sun doesn't have that much of an effect on the weather. That's you, dude, for smoking cigarettes and farting, and your dog farting, your cow farting. The sun's got very little to do with the climate. The heat. And I'm like, okay, it's good to be a pseudo-astronomer where I can disagree with science when it says dumb shit. Back to the article at hand. It has, we now know, been the center of everything we've known. No wonder we assumed it was divine. Okay, how would you prove that it wasn't divine? I mean, it gives you life, you know? Isn't that the actual definition of divinity? Okay. Which makes news just coming out of the University of Texas at Austin. Soon to be reported in the Astrophysical Journal, particularly monumental. I lived in Austin for like five years. I was a doorman on 6th Street one summer. That was definitely one of the best summers I ever had. I got to meet Jessica Beale. Man, she's so cute, but she's tiny. She's almost the size of a Hershey's Kiss. Okay, our familiar star, it turns out, is not quite unique. Oh, you think? Monks. A trillion stars? Okay, that is a bold assessment, Megan. Our sun has a sibling, a sister star that almost certainly originated from the same cloud of gas and dust as our own shining orb. Once again, how to determine if it was a brother or a sister? I'll leave that up to you. The IAU. They like to find and crap. Especially the dumber the conversation, the more the IAU will fight about it. So tear each other up, dudes. That sibling. A star with the deceptively dull name of HD 162A26. Said star is 15% more massive than our sun and located 110 light years away from us in the constellation Hercules, which is appropriately 
unduly named. We can't see the Sun Sister unaided, but even a set of low power binoculars reveals HD 162826. It's situated near, well, relatively near the bright star of Vega. Okay, hey, remember this. What you learned in one of your first Thor News classes is that our sun is traveling towards Vega. This is very important. I'm now kicking the stuff I put between the lines in the B half. The fact that we're traveling towards Vega is very important. We'll get into that later in other episodes, I imagine. If you were on our sister sun's Earth-like planet looking at us, what constellation will we be in? You know? I wonder if we're in the Thor constellation. Probably. Okay. Hercules! Hercules! Uh, shouldn't Hercules be in the sister sun instead of she being Hercules? Yep. Nonsensical today. Man, his jokes are stupid. The discovery was made by a team of researchers led by the UT astronomer Ivan Ramirez. With help from several groups around the world using a combination of chemical analysis, high resolution spectroscopy, and information about the star's orbits, their quote, dynamics, unquote. The team created a list of solar sibling candidates that included 30 stars using information provided by telescopes at both the McDonald Observatory in Texas and the Las Campas Observatory in Chile. They narrowed the field. In the end, there was one that matched our sun. It was a lucky coincidence, Ramirez said. Uh, that's not a very sciencey thing to say, man. Well, I guess. No, I, I take that back. Reverse that. I guess science always says strange things are coincident. Ramirez says that HD 162 826 emerged as our son's sibling. As it turns out, Sister Son has, for the past 15 years, been a subject of study by the McDonald Observatory Planet Search Team. Whoa. Studies conducted by that team, together with the calculations provided by the University of New South Wales, mean that we already know a little bit about our sibling sun solar system. Doesn't seem to have any hot Jupiters. That's okay, because nobody wants to make out with Jupiter anyways. For example... Massive planets that orbit close to the star itself. That's a bad sentence. I don't know. Something about it's confusing. It just goes, for example, and it goes into brackets and then there's a period. That seems very wrong. It also doesn't seem to have an analog to Jupiter itself. It may, though, have other terrestrial planets. And there is a chance, Ramirez says, small, but not zero, that those planets could harbor life in their earliest days within their birth cluster. He explains. Collisions could have knocked chunks off of planets, and these fragments could have traveled between solar systems, and perhaps even may have been responsible for bringing primitive life to Earth, or fragments from Earth could have transported life to planets orbiting solar siblings. Ramirez said, exactly like that, so it could be argued that solar siblings are key candidates in the search for extraterrestrial life. And if so, there are a lot of candidates. HD 162826 may be the first solar sibling we know of, but it is, Ramirez thinks, not alone in that. That long ago cloud of gas and dust kept busy. Wow, <laughs> your sister's busy, buddy. The idea is that the sun was born in a cluster with a thousand or a hundred thousand stars, Ramirez says. And that cluster, which formed more than 4.5 billion years ago, has long ago broken up, with member stars situating themselves into their own orbits around the galactic center, which in turn scattered them across the Milky Way as it exists today. A few like Boring Star name are still nearby. Ramirez says others are much farther afield. I would say let's name it Amy Mainzer, but then... That would make my crush on Amy Manzer already creepier than it already creepy is. Right, creepo? Man. So what are you going to say? Okay. See, then the whole debate. The sun sister could be a brown dwarf. Well, no, duh. And man, I'm so old. I remember when you could eat cookies without having a cookie policy. I give you a dollar. You give me a cookie. I ate the cookie. There's no need for pen or paper in this transaction. Make no sense, but that'd be okay. It is Friday night. I think me and my subscribers have an agreement. I do not have to make sense on the weekends. And I thank them for that. We're talking about the sun. Stars. Babies. Siblings. Families. So who's the papa daddy? Who's the daddy star? Who's the mama star? We got two kids here. We got, we got two daughters, man. 
So does like a star, if our star is 5 billion years old, does that mean it has to wait 13 billion years before it can date um, adult stars, you know? <sighs> yep, you come to Thor News for those super hard-hitting puff pieces. And I'm puffing, like puff the magic dragon. I live down by the sea. Sister Star, which stellar nursery did you come from? As a horrible Sister Christian ripoff. Let's play Find that stellar twin that's right the sun so if you were rooting for the sun's binary companion congratulations you ended up kissing your sister or what we call a tie so we kind of find its binary twin and then we kind of really did it but we do cool fun shit like that on thor news all the time tasted like molasses the sun's sister is she hot oh my god that joke is so awesome